So let's talk about equations of a line, and uh, you can reference the resource I gave on the class in a PDF format. Let me show you where that came from. I pulled it from page uh, 300. The, the info I'm going to give you is pretty much straight out of page 300 and 301 of this book. I would suggest uh, purchasing this book. We'll probably use it in a future class, and I'll probably make it required for a class. But anyway, very good book. I love the way they explain these things. Let's let's go through what they talk about as far as equations of lines and things like that. If we have a line, you're used to algebra, where you have y equals mx plus b. Okay, and we can graph a line with slope. This is a slope-intercept form. The y-intercept is this b, and the m is the slope, so on and so forth. Well, what they're doing in the book there is instead of saying y equals mx plus b, they change it and say, well, y equals, let's look here, ax ax plus, we'll put plus d, all right? So, no, nothing different here. The variable names just changed. m went to a, and b went to d. But then what else they do is they say, you know, y, y needs a constant out here. If you think about it, there's an implicit 1 here you could think of. That's 1 times y, but we don't want to write 1 times y, so we just write y, all right? But say I want to change this from a 1 to something else. Well, then they add uh, a b here. Right, so it's kind of confusing straight out of y equals mx plus b land because you could get this b confused with this b, but they're not the same b. All right, it's just we took the m from this equation, renamed it to an a, the b we renamed to a d, and then I have by equals ax plus d. Well, let's work this equation a little bit. I'm going to move the ax over here to the left hand side, so we can say by minus ax equals D. But if you think about it, the a's and the x's and the positives and the negatives, they're, they're kind of arbitrary. So, you know, I've, I, I'm going to change this to a plus sign, okay? But if I change this to a plus sign, then my a would be, I'd have a negative a or x. So these are just arbitrary values. So I can legally kind of change this to a plus. I know it looks like I'm breaking some math magic, but just think if I change a, if I change a minus to a plus, then that means one of these is going to change to negative, either the x, the a. But the, in the end, they're all just variables. Well, you know what? This looks a lot like the dot product. In fact, I'd probably implement the dot product tab uh, first before the line equation. I'm sorry I put them out of order here. But, but um, you know, if these are two vectors here, I can say, well, this is going to be b, uh, a. Actually, you know, this is the y and the x, so let's let's swap these. Let me erase this. I can, and again, now that I have a plus sign, I can, I can just swap them. Let's do ax plus by equals d, all right? But now I'm going to break these into vector forms. So vector a comma b, all right, dot with vector um, x, y equals d, all right? Well, and if you notice, if we take the dot product of these two vectors, we'll just end up back right here where we started, all right? But this is kind of cool. I got this, I got a vector here and a vector here, and so this vector dot that vector equals d. Well, if you look at the diagram in the book, or on the reference reading there, page 301, um, they have a diagram a lot like this. And so d, in this case, d represents this vector right here, this blue guy right there. As D, if you notice, let me grab the slider here. As I muck around with D, we're, we're, we're making the equation for this line right here. So as I, as I change D's value, see this vector D in standard position? As I change D's value, that determines the distance the line is from, from, from the, uh, the origin. Okay, that's our that's our distance. So that's kind of fun. I can mess around with this. Now, what's what's a b? Well, a b is the normal vector. So if you notice, let me um the the normal to the line, I guess n. So this would be a value, and this would be b's value right here. And you see, I have the normal vector, this red thing. I drew it in standard position, but I could I could turn around and move that normal vector. You know, it's a vector. We can move them wherever we want to. It doesn't hurt anything. I could draw that normal vector right there on the line. This is the this vector is normal or perpendicular, 90 degrees or pi over 2 from the line. So there's our n. Okay, but the the d is just a scalar multiple of the n. Right? I take d, multiply it by n, and that gives us the distance between the origin and the line. Okay, 
And then um this this uh let me clear this out here. I'll go right here. Okay. This vector I have here is kind of arbitrary. Notice the x and the y. What is x and y? Well, x right here is negative 1, x right here is negative 2, x right here is negative 3. So it depends on, the y is dependent on x, just like we started with, y equals mx plus b. Right? So you can pick any x, y. It just so happens right now my, my x, I have a slider, the x is 1. I don't have a slider for y, because y is dependent on the value of x. Okay, so, so as I change the x here, notice this vector slides up and down the line. The y depends on the value of the x. But if you just pick any of these millions of zillions of I almost infinite different values we can have for this second vector, I mean, it could be this vector, it could be this vector, or this one, or this one, or this one, or this one. It doesn't really matter. I just need to pick one. Once I have one, if I dot that with AB, which is the, you can think of it as the normal vector, then that gives us the D, the distance from the origin to the line. Anyway, that's how this piece of UI works is, it's it's kind of nice to see these equations in action. You can grab grab them with the sliders, and you can mess around. Right now, I'm messing around with the b part. Uh, we can mess around with the a part. You can get the feel of what you can control with with each of these sliders. But you can touch and get your hands on these um, this equation for a line because we're going to use this in the lab when you do the spaceship, and you have to you have to bounce the spaceship off um, some arbitrary boundary? Well, look at this. This is an arbitrary boundary. It's not horizontal. It's not vertical. It's just kind of there. And in order to bounce the spaceship, well, look, this equation, this line, is defined by this normal, you know, this little red normal here. Well, if I have a normal vector that is normalized, don't get the two terms mixed up. The normal means it's a normal vector is perpendicular. Normalized means it's length 1. If I have that vector, I can take the dot product. If I take my space, well, I'll leave that as an exercise. But basically, I'll do a dot product with the direction of my spaceship, and that gives me how far I should bounce off this, this arbitrary border there. So we'll leave that. We'll leave, we'll leave it right there and, and uh, have an in-class exercise how to actually do that.